Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2019 with Botev Plovdiv. We are in Season 4. We are mere days, weeks possibly, away from FM20's beta release. So the chances are this is going to be the final season if you didn't see the last episode. In between episodes, we've played a number of matches. And as you can tell, we're currently second place in the table. But we're undefeated. We've not dropped a single point in the league. We have also done some transfer business. Which I'm going to do the transfer business first. Because this is the final season, I've decided to just sell people for any money. Just get rid of them. So Georgi Trifonov has left. He's gone to Slavia Sofia for about £60,000. Ventislav Kerchev has gone and signed for Bero, who spent last season out on Mon at Montana. A uh, big old loss on him. From £375,000 to about forty. dollars 47 and a half, that's how much we might get in in total. Massive, massive drop in money there. Also, a number of players have left on loan. The biggest name to go out on loan is Dalibor Tadajevic, who has signed for Slavia Sofia. Hopefully, he's going to get an entire season under his belt, and then we'll never see him ever again. In ascending order of value, ignoring one player who came in on a free transfer, who we'll get to in a minute, we have signed 18-year-old Romanian central midfielder Adrian Mih Mihalescu. Yeah, Mihalescu. That's actually a lot easier than it looks. Adrian Mihalescu, he's 18 years old, he's from Romania, he's capped under 20 level, signed from FCSB, which is not Stair Bucharest, because I, I watched the video, I can't remember who it was from, and I read some articles, and yeah, they're not Stair Bucharest anymore. Anyway, he's joined for just under a million pounds, it was about £925,000. He's not played a game for us just yet, but probably will get a decent amount of football this year. For £1.2 million, we have signed Zoran Lekic, who is a 19-year-old Serbian central defender, signed from Javor. I think he's going to be getting a lot of football for us this season. So far, has yet to play a game, but that's more down to the fact that our current central defence partnership, which is... Uh, is it Sangare? I've forgotten their names. Sangare and Keita, the two uh, Ivorans at the back, basically keeping him out at the moment. Three-star current ability, five-star potential. Got some really good mental stats and physical stats on him. Also, technically, he's not terrible either. I think if we were to play this for about five more years, he could become world-class. Despite the fact that we have only got this final season, I'm still buying kids. A 19-year-old Bulgarian striker this time, Ivan Vidalov, who has signed from CSK Sofia. He's cost £2 million. He is a young striker. He's great at finishing. He's got actually 15 finishing. Scored a couple of goals as well for the Bulgarian under-21s. I think he's bloody good. Three-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential, decent mental, physical, and technical stats for a 19-year-old. For £2.6 million, we have signed Danish attacking midfielder Bo Moller from Silkborg. Silkborg, by the way, having really good youth, like youth team in this save. Don't know why. They are pumping out really good youth players. Bo Moller is the one that we have picked up mentally. Amazing. 20 determination is ridiculous. You very rarely get that on a player. Physically, also really good. Technically, he's got some brilliant technical stats. If he could finish, he could be a really good striker. Instead, he's going to probably play second fiddle to Stanislav Shopov for the season. But, you know, Bo Moller, if we played for five more years, he'd be amazing. The final player that we've signed is, uh, he's, you remember I signed Sami Nasri? Kind of done something similar. It's Dimitri Payet. He's 35 years old. Uh, played for Augsburg in the last season. We've signed him on a free transfer. He's only got one year deal. He is retiring at the end of the season. He's 35 years old. He will be 36 before the season is out. He's three star current ability though. He's still actually good at football. Doesn't have the physical abilities anymore. Obviously can't run, but that is kind of expected at 35 years old. But technically and mentally, still amazing. You don't lose technical and mental skills like that. So I think Pae could be could be could. I think Pae could become a very useful player for us, even if it is just this one season. So yeah, transfer business. Then in total, we've spent fifteen point two five million pounds, and we've still got about ten million to spend. I think we've brought in five and a half million pounds. A load of players have also gone out on loan. Like I mentioned, Sheila, also another reasonably big name to go out on loan to Locomotive Gorna. Okay, we've got two point seven million pounds, but we're still well under our wage budget. So, in between episodes, we started off our league campaign. We've played four league games, or was that five league games, sorry, 
And we have, it's four, it's, that's, I can't count, it's four league games and we've won all four of them. First up against Dunav, a 1-0 victory, Lukanovic, then CSK 1948, Zeman and Todor Nedlev with the goals there. Botev Vratza, 3-0 this time, Zeman, Paye with a penalty and Lovre Grajfona. And then Varea, Zohinana, Zeman and Stanislav Shopov with a 3-0 victory. And as you can see in the middle, we had a little Vozdovac little pairing as well where we won 4-1 and 2-1. Nedlev with a brace, Zeman and Sangare and then Alex. Terzic, the left back, and Antonio Lukanovic with the other goal. So we are not only doing well defensively, we've only conceded three goals, two of them were um, in the Europa League. We're also scoring for fun. Three goals against Varea, three goals against Botevratza, four against Vozdovac away from home. We're getting on the score sheet a lot. Today, probably going to be a triple header. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do brief highlights of the first Hibernian match. Then we're going to do full highlights of Levski and the second Hibernian match. And if we beat Hibs, we still don't get into the Europa League. We're going to have another qualifying round before we get there. The starting lineup for the Hibs game then. Alan Sherry in goal. Terzic, Keita, Sangari and Bressel was the back four. Graj Vona and Nana in the middle. Bakaziev, Shopov and Nedlev as the attacking midfielders. And Martin Zeman will be the striker. So, of all of those transfers we've done, only two players are starting in this match against Hibs. In the 35th minute, we have made our dominant start to the match pay off finally. It is Todor Nedlev with the opening goal. A great ball from Plemen Bakaziev into the bottom corner from Nedlev. It is 1-0. Now, if we could only get more shots on target, we'd probably be 3 or 4-0 up at halftime. Instead, it is 1-0, that Nedlev goal, the only goal so far. Just two minutes into the second half, and Todor Nedlev does something very, very ridiculous. Straight into the bottom corner from a free kick, it is 2-0. With just eight minutes left on the clock, we make it 3-0. Plamen Bakardziev takes two attempts to put the ball in the back of the net. First one saved, second one fairly easy for the young winger. It is now 3-0. With seconds to spare, Hibs have scored a goal. This is literally their first highlight of the match. Denny Johnstone in the middle, unmarked. Easy goal for Hibs, but that is a vital away goal for them. And it is going to stay 3-1 then against Hibs. I'm disappointed that we've conceded an away goal because it now means when we go into the next match against Hibs, we do need to score a goal, realistically. We can still like lose, but we still need to now score a goal. We are back into league action after defeating Hibs at home in the Europa League. It is the big one. I say the big one. It is last season's champions. It is the team that we've already beaten once this season, 5-0. I think it was 5-0, maybe 5-1. We battered them, anyway, in the Bulgarian Super Cup. It is the team that beat us to the, the, uh, the, the league. That's what it's called. It, the team that beat us to the league. We just need to do them over. CSK Sofia are playing Botev Vratza, so you have to expect that uh, CSK are going to be winning that one. Both us and CSK Sofia, Slavia Sofia as well, not too far off the pace. All three of us actually undefeated so far this season. The starting lineup we're going to go for against Levski is uh, very changed from what I was hoping to play, partially down to fitness. I say partially, all down to fitness because a lot of our regular starters like Nedlev and Nana down on 88%, 87% fitness, so there's a few changes there. We are going to go with, we're doing a change already, I've just spotted another one. There we go. We're going to go with Alan Sherry in goal. Bressel, Sangare, Zoran Lekic will be making his debut, and Gabriel Zemjarski as the back four. Yanez Pisek, who I've promised some first team football to, as the deep line playmaker. Fuseni Kamara as the central midfielder, with Nakashidze, Shopov and Plamen Bakardziev as the attacking midfielders. Martin Zeman will be our striker. On the bench, we do have, obviously, you've just seen Terzic's go, gone on there. Todor Nedlev is on the bench. Lukanovic, who has scored twice already this season, despite the fact he's only started once. Nana, Rusev, Vidalov also on the bench, as well as young goalkeeper Angel Milkov. Something's happening. Something is happening, and uh, Levski are not playing either of the Petkovs. Now, is Kostov very good at football? Not really. Why are you playing Kostov? Is Ivanov very good at football? He's okay. For an 18-year-old or 19-year-old, He's okay. But they are playing a 4-4-1-1, which is uh, very different from what they normally play. They normally play a 4-2-3-1. Is that what it is? Or a 4-2-2-1? I don't know. They normally play with wingers and one striker. You'd think after playing four seasons with uh, Botev, I'd actually understand who uh, Levski actually seemed to play. But nope, 
We are 25 minutes in and we're getting nothing. We're getting no highlights. We are getting a highlight. Shopov with the corner. It's towards the middle. It's cleared. Sangari is going to get it back to Stanislav. Shopov crosses in low. Not the best of cross. Gets another chance. Pisek to Fuseni Kamara, who has some space, has to go across to Gabriel Zemiarski instead, who can just about control it. Now he runs forward with the ball. Shopov again finds Bressel. That's a great ball. Crosses in from Bressel. And it's his Martin Zeman gets on the end of Kwambe's clearance. Martin Zeman, his sixth goal of the season. That is almost a million pounds a goal, which is still a lot of money. But he, so far, is proving to probably be worth the money. Maybe not, I probably could have got him cheaper, but six and a half million pounds, he scored six. Great little header. And that goal moves us to the top of the table because currently CSK Sofia are drawing, I assume, nil-nil with their opponents. Half time then, and judging by the latest scores in Bulgaria, it's uh, pretty dull, everywhere. Nil-nils across one, two, three, four, five matches and two one-nils. So we're luckily in the front, in the front. Yep, we're luckily in front in one of those 1-0 matches. Just get Ivan to do the half-time team talk. Doing no changes, although Sangare, I think, is on a 6.6, .6, which is not good when your best defender isn't performing. It's also not good when the first highlight cap... Nope, okay. Throw in for Goronov to take. Ivanov's not going to get there. Yanis Pisek with the ball to Zeman in the area. He has to score that. He just calmly passes it to the goalkeeper. Mariani with a free kick for Levski. Alan Sherry just about saves it. Bressel and Pisek can clear the ball together. Time to mix it up a bit. Nakashidze is coming off. Nedlev will be coming on. I'm thinking I want to bring Lukanovic on. You know what? We're doing it. Lukanovic is going to come on for Shopov. He's not an attacking midfielder, but we're going to give it a go anyway. Paulinho with a corner for Levski. The header from Petkov is just wide off the post. They brought on one of the Petkovs. Ludogretz are beating Lokomotiv Plovdiv. I don't know why I said that. It's not really relevant to us. Throw in with just four minutes left to play. Paulinho with loads of space, actually, to run into. He's going to keep going. Plays the long ball across to, what's his name? Nadanov can't cross it in, but Kwambe gets the ball for Levski. Serkan lose out to Pisek. Now Kamara with the ball, who luckily got the deflection. Forward to Lukanovic, the makeshift attacking midfielder, finds Bressel on that right-hand side inside the Levski half. To Nedlev now, who hasn't done much since coming on. Kamara with some space. It's a lovely little touch across to Zeman from the defender, I think it was, but Zeman's effort is saved by the goalkeeper. It's going to be a victory here against Levski, which is probably a very, very good three points. Annoyingly elsewhere, CSK Sofia, I think, did win their match in the end, so we do stay in second place. But our 100% record in the league is continuing. I'm going to stop Coach Ev doing team talks because he's bloody rubbish at them. Oh my word, Bota Vratsa. 94th minute equaliser by Martinov has meant that we go top of the table. That is the first points dropped from CSK Sofia. Actually, they dropped down to third place on goal difference. Slavia Sofia now move up into second place. And they've moved into second place because of bloody Tadajevic scoring in the 91st minute. Botev Plovdiv go top of the first league. Lekic makes his debut and five games won in a row conceding just one goal. We haven't played the biggest of teams. I mean, obviously Levski, big team. CSK 1948 also had a very good year last year. We still haven't played Yaludogretz's. We haven't played CSK Sphere. We also haven't played anyone in the locomotive Plovdiv derby. It's not the locomotive, it's just the Plovdiv derby. Out of interest, are there any other derbies? We've got the Plovdiv derby. We've also got the Trakia derby against Barrow, who are in our league. Have we? We haven't played them yet, have we? No, we've got them very soon, though. Fair enough. Next up, we're going to go forward to the Hibs match in the Europa League, and hopefully we can find ourselves into the next knockout round. Welcome back. We have made it all the way to Scotland, to Easter Road in Edinburgh, to play Hibernian for our second full match of the episode. 3-1 after the first leg, if you remember at the start of the episode. We just need to score a goal. If we score a goal, it's going to be very difficult for Hibs to get back into this. If we score twice, it's going to be extremely difficult for Hibs to get back into this. The starting lineup we're going to go for then in goal. We're changing already. I always do this. It's going to be Angel Milkov. I'm going to give him a game. Why not? Amadaj, Bressel, Sangari, Keita and Zemiaski will be the back four. Grashvona will partner Fuseni Kamara in the middle. Todor Nelev, Stanislav Shopov and Dmitry Paye will be the attacking midfielders. With Martin Zeman as the striker on the bench, we do have Omar Tape. Uh, he's registered for the Europa League. I'm not quite sure why. So I thought, you know what, let's stick him on the, uh, on the bench. He's actually pretty bloody good. So, he scored, what, five goals in 30 appearances last season at Etar, two in 28 at Montana. Hopefully, 
he can score goals for us. We're going to give him a go, possibly in the second half. Hibbs being extremely exciting with a 4-4-2, I think. Who's their goal scorer? Where is he? He's, he's there. He's on the bench. Okay, so the goal scorer from the last match is possibly going to be coming on at some point. I said earlier I was going to stop having Coach Ev take team talks. He did okay, I guess. I mean, three people. It's not that good. Is it a good idea to play a 16-year-old goalkeeper in a match that we really do not need to concede any goals in? Probably not. He is, however, a very good 16-year-old goalkeeper, so I've, I've got faith. I've got faith in young Angel. Sangare with a free kick after seven and a half minutes. Stanislav Shopov with the ball across to Kamara. He's going to run forward, gets tackled, and now potentially a break for Hibs can be on. Sangare cuts out the clearance. Grashvona back to Sangare. Now Charles Cater and Sangare, the two Ivorians, passing it between the pair of them, getting their pass accuracy rating up. Bressel to Grashvona, back to Bressel. Back to Sangari. We're doing loads of passing, not going anywhere. Sangari all the way back to Milkov, who can now play the long ball upfield, and it basically ruins all that lovely passing. Nedlev with the ball from Grajfona's header through to Martin Zeman in the area. He goes for goal from a tight angle. It's saved from Marciano, but we do have a corner. Nedlev goes over to take the corner. It's towards the back post. Marciano can easily claim that. Bressel's throw finds Nedlev, but he gets tackled by Horgan, and now potentially a break for Hibbs. Mallon to Horgan once again. He plays a very, very good ball across to find Duffy on the right-hand side, who crosses in. Kimber Kimberly? It's not Kimberly at all. Somebody was there. Cambury. It's not Kimberly, it was Cambury. It's been fairly exciting, but not really much has happened. So the highlights we have had, things have gone on, but still no goals, and only one shot on target. And it stays that way all the way until half time. I'm going to shout at people. Um, we should let them know it was a very good performance. Um, what? Are you? No. Angry? I'm not happy. I mean, you look stressed. I mean, you're doing fine. Don't worry about it. No changes at half time. All I want is a goal. That's all I'm after. Just the one goal, and we'll be fine. Throw in for Hibbs. Cambry once again. Hennigan crosses in. Koulibaly's there at the back post. Suleiman Koulibaly has made it 1-0 to Hibbs. That is not what we want because now if they score one more goal, they go through on away goals. We're not doing badly. We're just not doing anything. I think that's the problem. If you want a job doing, bring on Omar Tape. He's a three-star striker, so could be a good idea. Payet coming off as well for Bukadjev. I don't think Payet's even touched the ball. We might do Shopov for Lukanovic. We're doing all of it. All of our subs are happening on 66 minutes. Approaching the final 10 minutes, we've had no highlights. This second half has been literally one highlight that ended in a goal for Hibs, and it is going to probably end 1-0 unless something happens from this corner. Horgan's corner comes in. Kamara clears. It's not cleared far enough from Grashfona. Robertson back to Horgan, the corner taker. He runs into the air, crosses in. Sangari gets it clear, and now we can break Nedlev with the ball. Omar Tape just needs the ball rolled in front of him, and Tape has to score. Tape, how has he missed? How has he missed? He had two chances. Nedlev with a corner with 30 seconds to play. It's cleared only as far as Kamara. Now Sangare. Where is the Ivorian going to go? Back to Bakardziev. Finds Kamara again. Now Grashfona. We've got 15 seconds. It's looking like it is going to peter out into a 1-0 defeat. But it's going to mean that we're still going through. It is our first defeat of the season as well. Which I'm not best pleased with. Because we didn't actually perform very well at all. Ivan Kochev, I'm, I'm sacking you. you. You're done. We should let them know that was a good performance. One player got a 7.10 and that was Nedlev. Our goalkeeper actually did very well. You're getting an angry team talk and then you're getting a... You did good. You did assertively. You did well. There you go. You looked happy. Good. Saved. Well, we've made it through. It wasn't exactly the most convincing way to get through to the next round of the Europa League. When is the draw? I always ask this. I should probably know by now. The draw will be tomorrow, so we're going to go forward a day. We're going to see who we're going to potentially be up against. We are going to be in the seeded teams, so we're going to have one of the unseeded teams, which includes Lil. I mean, that's that's a good unseeded team. The rest of them, I reckon we could do. I want these, although I can't pronounce their name at all. Time for the draw, then. We are Group 1 seeded teams. I don't understand how this works at all, because... There's lots of Group 1 seeded teams, but they're split. Can we play one of the Group 1 unseeded teams? Is that what's going to happen? We're going to play AAB, Antwerp, Aberdeen, or Ferenc Faros. Is that how this works? Or Grasshoppers, or uh, or Maritimo, or Vitesse. I don't know. Why is it all broken up like that? 
Okay, we are at home for the fourth qualifying round. Ludogorets have been drawn away against Vitesse. Who have we got? Is it going to be... So it's going to be a Group 1 unseeded team, I reckon. So AAB, or another trip to Scotland, or Grasshoppers. That's our options. It's AAB. It's it's not the best one. Honestly, it's not the best one. But I will guess I'll take it. That is the full draw then. As you can see, Ludogrets versus Vitesse. One thing I want to check... I say Ludogrets versus Vitesse. That's, we're not either of those teams. But it's Plovdiv versus AAB is obviously our match. I want to check the Champions League... How you getting on, Levski? Uh, you are through. You are through into whatever that is. Which also happens now. Does it? Sure, we'll just draw this while we're here. I mean, we're not even in this competition. So Levski have got AEK. Of all the teams in that, that's a really tough draw. And I think if they get through that, they will be going through to the, the actual group stages of the uh, Europa League, I believe. Champions League. It's the Champions League, not the Europa League. Anyway, that is going to do it then for this episode of Football Manager 2019 with Botev Plovdiv. We have drawn AAB in our final Europa League qualifying round. Next episode, we are going to go, I don't even know, here, probably. We'll probably have that in Cherno more. I don't know. It's not going to be very far because obviously that is a very big match in order for us to get through to the next round of the Europa League. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like, if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button, and I'll be back next time.